channel in today's video I'm gonna be answering the questions that you guys have been asking me so that is through Instagram or through the comments and I am really excited to do so just because I just love these types of videos I feel that it's so chill and I can just talk to you guys casually and also note that I'm doing this in a car and that is because I am in San Diego and I just don't have the space to film inside a room which is totally fine so hopefully you guys don't mind that but anyways let's just hop right into the questions okay the very first question I am answering is can I be a software engineer without a CS degree and yes I find that this is very common it is very common for people to get these software engineering skills and learn how to code and I work with so many people that don't have CS backgrounds so I feel like that's becoming more and more common like even I don't have a CS background so don't let that stop you you can learn those skills yourself and also just through a different major if you're in college so yeah totally you can totally get a software engineering job without any CS degree. <laughs> Could you tell us what kind of steps did you take to land the internship? And I get these questions so much, like how do you get internships and all of that. And honestly, the secret formula is to have projects and take on leadership roles because if you just do schoolwork, then you're just gonna blend in and be like everyone else. But if you have technical projects and personal projects and you can showcase that you have leadership skills, then I feel like that's what is really gonna set you apart. And I feel like that's like the magic formula to be honest. And also network, like networking is so, so important because if you just stay in your little box, in your little home, you're not gonna go anywhere. You have to get yourself out there. You gotta network, you gotta talk to recruiters, go on LinkedIn, just try to hit some people up. <laughs> so you just gotta do that and that that is honestly the best way to get internship and lastly I would recommend looking at like your dream internship looking to see all the requirements that are listed and then working on getting those skills that are on those requirements into your resume so that is personally what I would recommend do I have any interest in eventually becoming a PM or do you think I'll stick to working in development so yes I do have interest in looking at different careers within technology so I definitely am considering maybe becoming a PM maybe going into design I really just don't want to be stuck in one place even though you can still advance a lot within development I just feel that I rather go more either the design route or management route rather than just going straight up to pure development so that is definitely something that I'm considering and something that I just want to do in the future. Another question that I, I got asked a lot is that if it's stressful and if I work long hours and if I work extra. So I don't work extra hours. My job is actually hourly. So if I work more, then I would have to get paid more and also would have to talk to my, talk to my manager about it. So right now I don't unless I am on on-call. That is a thing in software development. Sometimes you have to be on on-call and if something goes wrong then you have to be there to fix it but apart from that i don't really stress out too much unless there's like a project deadline and also sometimes i get stressed when i get like a new problem and i just don't know how to fix it it gets a little stressful sometimes but just knowing that this is like my job and it's okay not to know just having that mentality helps with stress if that makes sense just because you're gonna get thrown a lot of things that you just don't know how to solve and just talking to different people and and just also googling things and making sure that you know how to solve these problems is part of the job getting into that mentality helps a lot honestly and just keeping like my stress levels down another person asked if I was able to make my own planners and if I designed them and if you don't know I have a small Etsy shop that I literally started like a month ago and I just put my products out there just to see if it would even get any traction like I didn't think it would even get traction but it actually did so I am really proud of them but yes I did make them I designed them I looked into manufacturers within LA so it's locally sourced and I'm just super proud of it I'm really looking for ways to expand on that so putting it in different channels and 
And by channels, I mean like putting it on Amazon, making a Shopify store, which I'm so excited about because that's kind of like web development. But yeah, that is kind of like my plans for that. And I did design them. It's super fun. And it's something I do like on the side just because right now, 2020, we have a lot of times in our head. And I decided to just open up a business rather than just like watching Netflix all day or something like that, just because I really just wanted to use my time wisely and just do something to make a little extra money. Another person asked what technologies do front end developers use and what stuff do front end developers need to be good at. So in a high level, front end developers need to be good at HTML, CSS, and a JavaScript framework. So that's like React, Angular, etc. And I want to go more in depth about this. And I'm thinking of writing like a medium post to go just like full on depth of like what to do and how to prepare for interviews and all of that. So if you're interested in reading this medium post right when it goes out, please make sure to subscribe to my email list. And by subscribing to my email list, you will get a free PDF template of how to do your resume. So that's a win-win. And I just really want to put that stuff out there so you guys can read about it and just really help you guys accomplish your goals and becoming a front developer just because I know that you guys come to my channel for that just because a lot of people are interested in that so I definitely want to help you guys out and I'm here for it. Another person asked if I am part Asian or what ethnicity I am and I am actually part Japanese, part white, and part Mexican and I'm totally kidding. Let me know in the comments down below if you actually believe that because I feel that a lot of people do and they always think that I am something else than what I actually am. But in reality, I am actually 100% Mexican. I know Spanish. Spanish was my very first language, so I'm super proud of that. But I've also been in California my whole life. I'm born and raised here, so I am like Mexican, American, and yeah, I'm really proud of my roots and where I come from. Another person asked if they would mentor a viewer, which I thought that was so cute. And with mentorship, I really try to reply to as many of you guys as I can. Obviously, there's a lot of you guys, so I can't get back to every single person, but I feel like with mentorship and just more professional stuff, I'm definitely more active in that in LinkedIn. So if you're interested in that, please make sure to reach out via LinkedIn and I will try to get back to you and maybe set up something if there is time on my hands. Obviously, I try to conserve my time and energy. So again, I can't get back to every single person, but I do try to set up some meetings with some of you guys and try to help you guys out as much as I can. Another person asked if getting a master's degree will help her get a better job. And that just kind of depends. I know that's not the answer people want to hear, but it just kind of depends like if you have a dream job set right after college or not. So if you do, then I don't think a master's degree is worth it. But if you don't and want to keep pushing yourself forward, then I totally agree that getting a master's degree can get you into that better job that you want so it just kind of depends like what point of life that you're in or if you're at the job that you like or not another question I got asked is how tall I am I'm actually five seven another person asked how's living in LA and if I recommend it so LA has many pros and cons so some cons is that there's like a lot of traffic there's a lot of people and it is also very very big so it's like hard to get to places just because it's so huge there's also a lot of homeless and it's also extremely expensive but the pros are that we have really good weather even though it's like really hot right now but overall we do have really good weather and it's also really great that we have both like mountains and the beach so there's a lot of outdoor activities that you can do it is also very motivating to be in LA just because I feel like a lot of people who are there are like straight up hustlers so like I just feel inspired and the fact that there's so many amazing people that live here and just like very inspiring people just kind of drives me to be a better person and push myself forward so that's a very big pro and overall I would recommend it but I do have to say it's not for everyone so if you're thinking about moving I would definitely come out here and check it out see for yourself if you like it or not and then make that decision just because I know there's some people that love it and there's some people that hate it the next question that a lot of people asked is what is the salary of a software engineer and the salary really depends on where you live so since I live in California, obviously the salary is higher. So if I look it up right now, it says that the salary in California average is 86k to 140k. So that kind of gives you a range of around how much I make. 
but obviously if you look at different places like I don't know if you look at Nevada it will make less because cost of living is less so it kind of works that way okay so a lot of other people ask tech interview tips and what I personally did was go through leak code and try to do as many different types of concepts and put it into this journal that I had just because doing it on my laptop is not the same as actually writing it down. I just feel like I've learned so much more if I actually write it out, if that makes sense. So whatever I did on the laptop, I would pass it on to my journal just so it would be like engraved in my head. And then I would just practice as much as I could. So leading up to my interviews, I would just try to do like at least one leak code problem per day. And then also aside from that, I would recommend looking at technical interviews like on YouTube and see how they answer the questions because how they answer the questions is very important so kind of just like an overview is like looking at the question and asking clarifying questions to show the interviewer that you ask questions and you just don't jump into a problem right away and then also going into kind of like a pseudo code just like step by step of like what you're gonna do and then writing it out and then also thinking out loud that is a very important skill to have and then also just asking questions and just don't be so scared of like your interviewer just remember that they're person and they just want to know how you're going to be able to work with them so just be friendly ask questions if you're stuck that's totally fine just say that you're stuck and that you just need a little pointer and they'll point you to the right direction don't be scared if you don't get it 100 percent right they just kind of care more of like your thought process and like what you're thinking and also aside from that i just google like top interview questions for a front-end developer and just really made sure to like know those as well so so that was just kind of what I did in order to prepare for my interviews. Okay, and the last question I'm going to answer is what other area of study do you wish to have also studied? So another area that I've always been interested in is in design. So I think I would have taken more design classes, maybe more human computer interaction classes but that is not stopping me from doing it now. Obviously there's so many courses online that I can just take, so I'm definitely doing that. And yeah, that's something that I'm also interested in and want to know even more about. So that is that for this q and I really hope that you enjoyed watching and that you found it helpful. And please make sure to subscribe if you haven't already. I would really mean a lot. I am almost to 10K, which is so, so amazing that I started this a year ago and I never would have thought that this would even turn into a thing but I'm really thankful for all of you guys I know it's a small community but really I'm just really thankful for each and every one of you and if you made it this far comment below if you're like a student or already in the workforce I'm curious to see like what you guys are doing right now so let me know and that is pretty much it for this video and I will see you next week bye guys